took me seven years to land my first cybersecurity role and if I could go back in time, this is exactly how I would do it. I will break this video into three parts, mindset, qualifications, and getting the job. And if you're not in college or university, then this video is for you. It might be a little bit more challenging, but if you're willing to put in the work, you can definitely become a cybersecurity professional all by yourself. In fact, if I could go back in time, I don't know if I would go back to university. Part one, mindset. This will sound a little bit of a cliche, but you need to adopt the hacker mindset. Mindset. A hacker is not someone who's a criminal. A hacker is someone who's curious, who's constantly trying to learn how things work. Have you ever wondered how your web browser works? Have you ever wondered what happened when you type in a URL in your web browser? What happens when you click enter on a web browser? I want you to go on and Google it and keep on reading and studying up until you figure out exactly how that process happens, which leads me to part two, qualifications. There is a really easy way to get started with the basics of cybersecurity that I only wish was available to me when I first started. There are four free courses by one of the best universities in the world, New York University, NYU. These courses are hosted at Coursera, a paid platform, but you get seven days free trial. They will give you a good introduction into what cybersecurity is, and they will take you through various very basic important concepts in cybersecurity. I'll leave a link to these courses in the description box below. Point 2.1, certifications. It's not about the piece of paper, it's about the knowledge that you gain. If you're just starting out, then this is a video where I go through certifications that I recommend to someone who's completely new to cybersecurity. When you do those certification, you see that process of studying for an exam and passing that exam in itself is a great way to gain knowledge into a certain topic. In my opinion, the best way of learning cybersecurity is by doing, and those certifications that I usually recommend are practical and hands-on, meaning you need to pass a lab exam in order to get the certification. Point 2.2, start a personal project. As you're doing the certifications, I want you to pick a topic that you're mostly interested in and I want you to do a deep dive in that topic. For example, if you decide that you want to become a penetration tester, then I want you to start a personal project where you do capture the flags, for example. And you can find those capture the flags online or you can do them through something like Hack the Box or Try Hack Me or even in events that you will find in your community. Or for example, if you decide to be a blue team professional or a security operation analyst in a SOC, then pick a tool and get really good at it. In my opinion, doing Splunk training and certifications, which are completely free is an excellent way for someone who wants to become a SOC analyst. And that can be your personal project. You can do things with Splunk, you can search, you can do queries, you can write your own little scripts in Splunk. That can be your personal project, which you can put into your CV. Which bring me to the last point, getting hired. The first thing that you need to look at for getting hired is your CV. You can be the best cybersecurity professional in the world, but if your CV is bad, no one's going to call you for an interview. And the most important part of your CV is the practical skills and the tool and the knowledge that you have. For example, if you're targeting penetration testing job, it's really, really important to add specific skills to your CV. So talk about your experience using particular tools that you used in your penetration testing personal project or certification. The same thing applies if you're looking for a SOC analyst role as a beginner, is to add the tools that you've learned and got some experience and confidence with these tools. For example, if you've been doing Splunk certifications and you have a personal project doing Splunk work, then the first thing I want to see on your CV is that work you've done with Splunk. As a hiring manager, we know that someone who's new to the field doesn't have all the knowledge that we need but if someone who's a beginner show me that they know a specific tool that we used in the job trust me you will be a top candidate and I want to interview you. Point 3.1 applying for jobs. This one drives me crazy especially with people that I mentor. I usually get someone who's trying to break into cyber security and I ask them so how many jobs have you applied to and they'll be like I applied to maybe one or two jobs in the last two months and I got rejected. You can do this. As a beginner, you can't afford not to apply for jobs. Once you get your CV in order, I want you to apply to every single job that you see. I want you to look at all the jobs that are advertised on LinkedIn or any job search website in your country every single day and I want you to hit that apply button. Even if you meet 10% of what they want in that particular job, still apply. You never know. As a beginner, you need to get in front of companies as many times as possible. You need to gain experience in interviews. You need to gain that confidence in talking about your skills in interviews and this can not happen if all you're doing is applying for one or two jobs. Point 3.3, the interview. Remember the mindset that we talked about at the beginning of this video? Now this is where I want you to display and demonstrate that mindset. When we're hiring for entry-level jobs, we know that we don't have all the skills that we're looking for. But what we're really looking for is someone with a good attitude, someone who's willing to learn, and someone who can work well with others. And the way for you to demonstrate that 
is to let us know about the personal project that you've been working on, to tell the interviewer about the certifications that you've been doing. In fact, I want you to say this in the interview. I know that I'm still new in cybersecurity, but I'm willing to learn. If there is something that I don't know, I will figure it out and I will learn it. This communicates that you're someone with good attitude, that you're someone with an open mind or not arrogant and you're willing to learn. The other thing I want you to do before an interview is to actually search the company. For example, if you're interviewing with an insurance company, just have a look at their website, look at their values, look at what is it that they do. Bonus points for those who watch the video so far is I want you to get involved in the community. So go to meetup.com and look for cybersecurity events. There is probably some events that are happening in your city. This is the chance for you to make friends, to meet people who are trying to break into cybersecurity like yourself, but also you may meet hiring managers or you may meet people with more experience than yourself. And most of these events are usually for free. My favorite event is the OWASP chapter, which is focused on application security, even though I'm not an application security specialist, but I really enjoy listening to the speakers. I really enjoy the networking that happens. If you want a list of the certifications that I recommend, then this is the video where I discuss those certifications in detail. Check it out and I'll see you there.